Hi there, Todd with Tribble Painting. Today we're going to be talking about the 10 commandments of hiring a painting contractor, or for that matter, any contractor. While there's no one way to hire a contractor, if you follow these 10 questions, the chances of having a good outcome with your contractor are very high. We've all heard horror stories about contractors and bad experiences that people have had. But again, following this script will lead to a great outcome for you and your family. So who will be in your home? Sure, you met the owner or the salesperson, you felt comfortable with them, and you're thinking about hiring their company. But who is ultimately going to show up to your house, going to work in or on your home, be around your furnishings, your belongings, and most importantly, your family? This is a great question to ask. And any reputable painting contractor or contractor in general would love to have the chance to answer this question, to talk about their people, and talk about their culture. If a company does background checks, that's going to tell you a lot about how they feel about sending people into your home. So always ask about whether the company has a hiring process and whether they do background checks. Don't feel bad about asking this question. Again, any company who has a process would love to talk to you about this. Is your contractor insured? I'm always surprised at how many people don't know to ask this question or why this question is important. There's two types of insurances you should look for from the contractor you're thinking about hiring. First is general liability and next is workman's compensation. General liability insurance is the insurance that would protect you if the contractor damaged something on your home while they're working on it. You should look for a minimum of a million dollar general liability policy. Next is the workman's compensation policy. This protects the contractor's employees while they're working at your home. If, if an employee is hurt while working at your home and the contractor is not insured, the next person that they're going to look to for money is going to be you, the homeowner. So this policy protects you from getting sued and covers the employees of the contractor. So again, if you're hiring or thinking about hiring a reputable contractor of any kind, they would be happy to provide you with copies of their insurance policies. So always ask and make sure to check the dates to make sure that they're current. These policies are expensive and sometimes contractors will try to fly under the radar without having this insurance. So does the contractor you're thinking about hiring use employees or subcontractors? This is an important question to ask. There's differences between the two. Employees can be background checked, drug tested, and put through a training program, while subcontractors are, play, are paid a flat fee, which increases the likelihood of them cutting corners to make sure they get the job done on time. If employees are paid by the hour, there's more likely that they're gonna take the necessary time to make sure the job ends up as intended. So always ask the contractor, that you're thinking about hiring if the people actually doing the work on the house are employees or subcontractors. Does the company you're thinking about hiring have a hiring process? This is a good question to ask. Companies who have a hiring process really take pride in not only the finished work that they provide, but also says a lot about the company culture. Is this a company that attracts long-term employees or does anyone who walks through the door get a job? So be sure to ask about the company's hiring process to make sure that they have intention in who they hire so that you can be confident in the people who will be at your home and the skill level of the people doing the work in your home. Okay, so what type of training do the painters who are coming to your house or contractors coming to your house receive? It's okay if not everyone working on the project has been doing this type of trade for 20 years. But it's important to know that the people coming to and inside your home have some type of process that they've been trained on in order to do the work in and on your home. Because ultimately, your satisfaction and the quality of the project at the end will have a direct correlation to the training program and process that the company you ultimately hire 
has for their employees. So meeting someone personally for the estimate is important. While not necessary, I think it does add some value when you hire someone to work in and on your home. You get to meet someone, the representative of the company, maybe even the owner. You get to hear their story and get a feel for what's important to the company and also let them know what's important to you in terms of someone working in and on your home. Now today with COVID, not all estimates have to be done or are done in person. So this is not a requirement. You can certainly do estimates through pictures and through uh, talking on the phone. So while not ultimately necessary to hire a contractor, I just think it adds a certain amount of comfort when you get to meet someone prior to hiring them. So knowing what's important to you, ensuring that in your expectations on quality with the estimator are very important so that the estimate that you receive encompasses everything that you hope to get out of the project. If you hold back of some, some of this information, ultimately at the end there might be some conflict between what you expected and what the contractor delivered only because they didn't know that that should be part of the process. So if you have the right estimator, they're going to ask these type of questions, but don't hold back any information. Give it to the contractor so that in the end, you're happy with the end result. So the contractors that you've talked to and are thinking about hiring are asking about a down payment or a deposit to secure your spot. This is completely acceptable and you should expect to do this to secure your spot with a contractor. Most contractors, the good ones anyways, are generally booked up far in advance and until you write that down payment check, you will not have a spot with that contractor. Do be wary of a contractor who asks for too large of a down payment. You've all heard horror stories about people writing checks and then never seeing the contractor again. There are some exceptions to that rule. If you're hiring a contractor, say, to install cabinets in your home, you should expect to write a check for at least the amount of the cabinets. That contractor has to order the cabinets, and if for some reason you decide in the end not to have them install those cabinets, they have to at least cover the cost of the cabinet. So writing a down payment or deposit check is completely acceptable if you're working with a reputable contractor. So who will manage your project once it starts? So you met with the contractor or the owner or the salesperson, you really like them, you received their estimate, and now the project is about to begin. But who will be your point person on a day-to-day -day basis? Will it be someone who's working on the project? I know for us we have project managers who work on the job, and that's a client's go-to person on a daily basis. I know it's hard to manage a paint job if you're not there working daily. So if the company does not have a working person in charge, then at least understand the uh, line of communication and how to get a question answered if you have that on a daily basis. So what products and what application methods are going to be used in the process of painting your home or building your project? This is a question that's very reasonable to ask. It's also something you should ask for to be spelled out in the estimate. I know for us we always use top of the line painting products because we know they'll last and we know that the paint manufacturers will stand behind those products if ever there's an issue. So make sure you ask your contractor to put it in writing what product and what application method will be used. Okay, I know I said the Ten Commandments, but here's an eleventh, and I know this is really important when you're trying to decide who to hire. Check the references. And no, not every contractor is going to have a flashy website and tons of online reviews, but there's more than one way to check out a contractor. Ask for references. Ask for names and numbers and addresses of projects that they've completed so you can talk to someone and drive by. But certainly use the internet because most people, most contractors, will have some presence. And check the reviews. 
I think if you do all of these things with every contractor, that in the end, you're gonna know which contractor is right for you and who you're gonna be comfortable with for your next painting project. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you found this helpful in hiring your next contractor. And please hit subscribe and like. It helps other people interested in painting find our videos.